I'm just gonna kind of work through like the philosophical foundation of what we're doing and why. Why we organize the list a certain way, why we feel that this program is so beneficial for building a strong baseline of strength that then you can apply to your life, to any hobby, to any activity that you wanna do. So anytime that we're looking for an adaptation, whatever that adaptation is, we need to define that adaptation, right? So Connor does a great explanation of, of getting a suntan, right? And in the book, I believe that's the example they use in the book is getting a suntan. Well, if I wanna go out and get a suntan, I don't wanna go lay out for multiple hours the first day, all I'm gonna get is burn, right? So if I'm trying to get a suntan, I might go out for five minutes depending on my complexion and then a little bit more the next time I go out and then a little bit more and then over time, I'm gonna get that nice, copper tone, golden brown that we all wish we could have, right? And so strength training is kind of the same way. But when we're, again, to go back to thinking about adaptation, if we want to get strong, then we need to define what that means. That's the first step for us. So for us, strength is our ability to produce force against an external resistance. So the person who can deadlift 500 pounds is stronger than the person who deadlifts 400 pounds. We can all agree on that, right? So regardless of my height, if I'm a man or I'm a woman, my body weight, if I lift more, I'm stronger, okay? And now that we know that that's the adaptation that we want, we can organize and build a program around that to make sure that we're acqu acquiring the stress we need to create the adaptation that we want, okay? So the other thing is that we don't really get stronger inside here. We apply stress inside here and we get stronger through recovery. And then that allows us to adapt and then come in for our next stress later. So when we're applying our stress, we want that stress to abide by, I heard someone say it earlier, it made me so excited, minimum effective dose. And what does that mean? What does that mean to apply stress in a min minimum effective dose manner? It just means that when we're, when we're choosing an increase or we're choosing a stress, we want to pick the minimum amount necessary to begin that cycle. That cycle of where my body is going to say, whoa, Tim, you did something new today. We need to adapt to that so that we can handle that next time it happens. So we're going to pick a minor stress that basically resides slightly above our baseline or homeostasis. Okay. And then what happens is you're going to go through a certain time of recovery and your body is going to go through what's called overcompensation. But you might think to yourself, well, then I'll do the same next time and I'll do the same next time. And that's what often before, you know, most of us, I remember when I was going to like LA fitness as a kid or 24 hour, it'd be like, I'd go in and curl the same weight every single time and do my three sets of 10. And I never really got stronger, but I didn't know what I was doing anyway. So it was okay by me, but for us to continue the cycle, after we go through recovery, we're going to bump up that stress a little bit more. Okay. And I often talk about strength training is really data gathering. We're really like gathering data and that's, we do that through the organization of our sets and our reps and the weight on the bar. Several of you mentioned the novice linear progression and what makes it so special, what makes it work so well is the only variable is the weight on the bar. Everything else stays a constant. And if any of you have backgrounds in you know, scientific studies or anything like that, we know that those best studies have the least variables possible, right? The more constants I have, the more accurate my data is. So the novice linear progression works so well because the only thing we're gonna change is that weight on the bar. So that really gives us a clear view of what caused that, that difference, right? It's like if I'm trying to switch my diet and I, or I've been having digestive issues and I, I get rid of everything and I'm feeling better, I don't really know what caused me to feel better, right? It's not until I start adding things back in that I know exactly what was the cause of my distress. So, so we have a basic understanding of the stress recovery adaptation process. We want to incrementally increase our stress over time and we're trying to build strength. So we're going to change that dose of stress by adding weight to the bar, right? That's our, that's our tool we're using to change the stress. Now for the lifts that we're going to have in this program, we're going to weave or the way Mark Ripito developed the program is that we have to have criteria for those movements. We have to have 
a reason for which we organize, organize the movements with the way we do, right? So the first one is most muscle mass. If I'm gonna have David squat, I want David to squat in a way that's gonna use the most muscle mass possible. I want him to get the most bang for his buck out of what he's doing. If you're gonna squat, I want you to, you know, use that time as effectively as possible. And then the second, we often say most weight on the bar. I like to say progressive overload potential. That sounds really fancy. It just means what's gonna let me continue to add a little bit of weight to the bar for the longest period of time possible, okay? What's gonna prevent me from failing too early and allow me to keep getting stronger over the longest period of time. And then third is longest effective range of motion. We're really gonna see that when Connor teaches a squat. He's gonna talk about where that correct depth is, why we don't squat a quarter squat, and why we don't squat with our hips all the way to the floor. And he's gonna explain all that. We're gonna see why that ends up being the longest effective range of motion. So we have these movements and they're filtered through our three criteria. And those three criteria are built upon the idea that we're trying to build strength. 